Hey guys, welcome back to Film Truth. Today we'll talk about how to prospect for Opal in Australia. Let's head into it. Digging for Opal. We humans are obsessed with gleaming glittery things and will go to great lengths and expense to obtain gems such as gold, rubies, diamonds, and emeralds. Wars have been started, lives have been cut short, and vast fortunes have been won and lost while scouring the earth for that elusive glint of buried treasure. The search for such gems is now almost entirely dominated by big business. Like some 19th century adventurer, you or I can't just walk into a goldfield or a diamond mining area and hope to strike it rich. Before you'd even scratch the surface, the big mining companies would have you arrested and carted away. Staying at home and purchasing a lottery ticket is a far better option. However, there is one type of gemstone that amateur prospectors can still hope for. There's only one more chance to make your fortune with nothing but your bare hands and a lot of determination. Opal is the name of the gemstone. And where can you look for it? In the heart of Australia's outback, the strange and wonderful Coobapedi, the world's opal capital. Coobapedi is said to be the opal mining capital of the world. Opal is made up of silica, the same material that makes up sand. And given that the entire Coobapedi area was once a vast seabed, it's no surprise that this is an opal hotspot. Water picks up silica from sandstone as it percolates down through the ground, forming a silicon dioxide solution. The solution seeps into cracks and crevices, as well as casts left behind by decomposing sea creatures. The water evaporates, leaving behind the silica, which over millions of years transforms into an opal. The majority of opal is a dull white color that is referred to as common opal or potch and has no value. When the silica crystals are arranged randomly and light is not refracted, this is what happens. The valuable colored opal is created when the silica crystals are uniformly sized and lined up, allowing light to bounce off of them and create a rainbow of colors, red, green, blue, violet, yellow, or orange. Kubapedi Opal Mining the name Kubapiti is derived from the Aboriginal words Kupapiti, which means white man in a hole. And it's easy to see why when you see these opal fields. Since 1915, when a 14-year-old boy named Willie, who was working for a team of gold prospectors at the time, wandered off and discovered opals, white men have been digging holes here. Since then, people from all over the world have flocked to Australia to try their luck, and the opal mining industry has exploded. But it's been a roller coaster ride. The Great Depression nearly brought Coobapedi to its knees in the 1930s and 40s. And the town was only saved in 1947 when an Aboriginal woman made a world record breaking find that made headlines and sparked a new opal rush. The arrival of European immigrants seeking their fortunes in the 1960s caused the mining industry to grow into a multi-million dollar industry and Coobapedi evolved into a modern mining town. Today, Australia produces more than 90% of the world's precious opals and Coobapedi is known as the opal mining capital of the world. Coobapedi Opal Fields there's a BBC science series called The Treasure Hunters, where one of the episodes focuses on a visit to Cooper Pedy. But here in the soil of the territory they call Cooper Pedy lie riches beyond belief. It focuses primarily on the formation of various natural treasures and the lengths to which people will go to to get them out of the ground. There are few treasures more elusive and few places more personally challenging than the Australian outback's remote and inhospitable landscape. Coobapedi is located about 520 miles north of Adelaide in South Australia and 420 miles south of Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. The crew flew from Adelaide in a small plane you can also travel by road and rail, but the drive will take at least eight hours, plus breaks along long and lonely roads. It's a bit of a trek to get there, but it's well worth adding to your bucket list of places to visit in Australia. You can see the strange landscape stretching out below as the plane approaches, pockmarked with holes and spoil heaps like some sort of post-apocalyptic wasteland. The Coobapedi opal fields are where brave and possibly foolish men, and some women, but mostly men, come to seek their fortunes. Coobapedi Airport. You'll need a place to stay once you've been given your bag back. There's no luggage carousel here. 
and you might be wondering where all the hotels are at first, until you realize that many of them are hidden underground, which is why you can't see them. Kubipedi's desert climate is so harsh, temperatures can reach 45 degrees Celsius in the shade, that residents decided the best way to cope was to build their homes beneath the surface, where the sandstone maintains a much more pleasant 24 degrees all year. While digging rooms out, a few exceptionally fortunate individuals discovered opal seams, which sounds like a pretty awesome way to pay for the construction work and probably even afford a nice new sofa while you're at it. Although not all of the houses and hotels are underground, you can choose to stay on the surface if you prefer. Staying in an underground hotel brings the Kubapedi adventure to life though. The crew of this BBC show stayed at the Comfort Inn Kubapedi experience, which is a former opal mine that has been converted into a hotel with underground rooms with big comfortable beds and ensuite bathrooms. Staying in a room with no windows is a little claustrophobic. There's something about being underground that changes the feel and air quality of a room, but it's still very atmospheric and adds to the experience. Signs point the way to the Kubapedi underground hotels. So depending on when you visit, Kubapedi can be scorching hot. Dust and flies are two unwelcome guests brought on by the heat. As soon as you arrive, you'll notice the flies. They're everywhere, and they're not going to leave you alone. Buzzing around your face, settling on every available surface, especially moist areas like your eyes, nose, and lips. The famous Kubapedi flies. We've been told that they aren't always this bad, it's just that when the crew of this show arrived, it was at a particularly busy time. They did have to run out and buy fly nets right away to keep the bugs off their faces. They ended up looking like an edgy Australian outback bride. So if you ever pop down to Kubapedi, you may have to run out and buy fly nets straight away to keep the bugs off your faces. Flies in Kubapedi. However, don't consider getting married here, at least not in a big white gown. Because of the heat, Kubapedi is also extremely dry and dusty, and your clothes will turn orange as soon as you leave the house. The famous orange dust of the outback. The main opal fields are only a short distance from town. If you're serious about opal hunting, you'll need a four-wheel drive vehicle. However, if you're there as a tourist, which admittedly you probably will be, you can book an opal field tour or try to persuade a friendly local miner to take you for a drive. You really start to appreciate the strange beauty of Kubapedi once you get out of the town's built-up area. It's like a lunar landscape, dotted with holes where you half expect to see some kind of giant burrowing animal or alien creature emerge. What do you think about opal prospecting? Do you like opal? Let us know in the comments section. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.